here with the wonderful Gregorio Luke. Thank you, Gregorio, for being with us. It's my pleasure. You know, there's a special event uh, that you will be uh, lecturing at uh, about David Sikiros. Uh Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, uh, this Saturday, August 10, uh, as soon as the sun goes down, <laughs> at the Museum of Latin American Art, we will have uh, our programs called Murals Under the Stars. It's a program we've been doing for many years. And uh, the museum has a very large exterior wall. And we have potent digital projectors. And so we present the murals of Mexico in their original size. And uh, you can see them beautifully uh, proportionate with the original colors. It's really an experience. And so tomorrow, uh, we are going to dedicate our show to the great David Alfaro Siqueiros. Siqueiros is uh, one of the most controversial muralists, the more political of the three. But also, and that is what I want to focus my lecture, he's also a great innovator. People know Siqueiros because he uh, participated in the Mexican Revolution, because he fought against the fascists in Spain, and he, he was uh, an outspoken worker's leader. But he is also a great artist, and I'm going to talk about his contributions and his connection to American art. Fantastic. And you mentioned he's um, one of the great three, because there's Three great muralists that people know, uh, Diego Rivera, Jose Orozco, and uh, David Siqueiros. Now, they had a big impact on murals and art, uh, Mexican-American art. Uh, tell me what really caused you to focus on David this time around. You know, what, what are some of the things that people may not know about David and his work? Well, uh, David Siqueiros transforms art in a way that no other of his contemporaries does. For example, he, he discovers uh, this uh, acrylic painting that is normally used for cars. It's called piroxilina. And so he discovers that when you have a drop of this type of paint that dries quickly fall into another drop, it has like a chemical effect that is impossible to recreate with a brush. So Siqueiros would call this effect of the drop, of the mixture of the chemical paintings, he would call it the controlled accident. And so if you look at some of his paintings, they have this incredible background that could not have been done in a traditional oil technique. And this is precisely the foundation of abstract expressionism. Jackson Pollock was Siqueiros' disciple. And so he saw Siqueiros experiment with these acrylics, and then he would later do what, what he called the action painting. You, you must remember these scenes where he, he, Jackson Pollock goes around dripping painting on a canvas that he puts on the floor and creating these incredible effects. And this great abstract work would revolutionize American art, right? But it is, and this is what people do not know, a direct consequence of Siqueiros' inventiveness. But that is not even the beginning of, of Siqueiros' contributions. Siqueiros is a pioneer in the use of photography. He finds out that today you can be your own model. So he had photographers capture him in the strangest poses that later he would incorporate into his own paintings. He would also be very curious about movement. And so uh, if you go to some churches and you look at those images of the saints or the virgin, there are some churches where as you walk across the church, the saint seems to turn and looking at you. No? And so this is done deliberately, and Siqueiros was very intrigued by it. And so he studied how did the masters of the Renaissance achieve uh, the illusion that 
the painting is moving. So he applies this idea in his work. So when you look at one of the uh, Siqueiros' murals, the figures seem to be alive and seem to be dancing. He has dancers that seem to dance around you, or workers that seem to be mourning, uh, carrying uh, their, their bodies of their dead comrades, and you feel that you are in that procession, right? It's very interesting. So this is movement from left to right or right to left. But then there is also very interesting use of perspective and foreshortening. As you know, perspective is a way that we have to, to create the illusion of depth. The, the painting goes in. And so then uh, that gives you the feeling that instead of watching a flat surface, what you are watching is a forest or a jungle. Right? Now, you can do, do it also to give the impression that the images are coming out of the painting. And this is something that people like Uccello, the great Renaissance master, experimented with. Siqueiros was also very interested in that. And so he develops all these techniques. And so you look at his paintings and they appear to have a fist coming out or a dog that seems to come and attack you. And so, interestingly, when Siqueiros was in the early 30s here in, in Los Angeles doing his murals like America Tropical and others, he had a, a, a young group of of artists that were his assistants and were working with him and learned all of his ideas and so on. Well, it turns out that among these disciples of Siqueiros, some of them were illustrators that went on to work for companies like Disney and Marvel Comics and other. And if you look at some of these superheroes in America, Tarzan, uh, Superman, all these that seem to come out of the page, in many ways, these ideas where these superheroes are based on what Siqueiros imagined as the super proletarian heroes that he wanted to do, right? Uh, so that's another contribution. Also, when he was in his experimental workshop, Siqueiros uh, believed in developing art for the billboards. He is one of the inventors of the modern billboard. Only that Siqueiros thought that these billboards installed in freeways, on buildings, all these, would create the most interesting exhibits of all. So he dreamed of exhibits where, you know, you were driving your car in a freeway and you saw this art. And, and it would be art that would be seen by millions and it would change people's lives and art would be a part of every man, woman and child of a city. That is his dream. Of course, they ended up being used for commercial purposes mainly. But Siqueiros imagined these ideas. He uh, was a, a person that saw an art of the future. But unfortunately, because of Siqueiros' politics, Siqueiros was a radical uh, left-wing uh, artist. And not only that, he, within the, the, the left, he was to the radical left. He was very much uh, aligned with Stalin and all these people. And, he, and so he fought in the revolution. He fought in the war. He even tried to assassinate Trotsky at one point. Fortunately, uh, this failed. But his politics are so controversial. His, his duality of soldier artist and uh, of ideologue uh, a man who led strikes, who organized workers, a man who suffered prison because of his political beliefs. At a very late stage in his career, in 1960, when he was 60-something and he was already a world famous, he was in prison because he denounced the corruption of the Mexican politicians. And he was in jail in one of the most infamous Mexican jails, the Black Palace of Lecumberri. And so all his, his politics, his controversial attitude uh, have, in a way, banished Siqueiros from the mainstream of American art, to the point that in a lot of the art textbooks, either he has been deleted or he, ge he gets a very small mention, like almost like a footnote. He's one of the three great muralists, but he's certainly not given the attention of, of his own disciples like Pollock or many others, right? So fortunately, now that the Cold War is over and that there is not so much controversy about l 
these, these ideas, we are beginning to, to see Siqueiros as an artist and to, to look at his work uh, anew. And uh, he is becoming one of the most popular of, of, of Latin American artists in the country now. Last year, uh, the Getty Conservation Institute with the city of Los Angeles conserved and reopened his mural America Tropical. This is a mural that had been censored and whitewashed for 70 years because Siqueiros had placed in the middle of it a, a crucified farm worker under the imperialist eagle. So the mural had almost been attacked almost from its, right after its creation. Who would ever imagine then two ideological opposites like the money of John Paul Getty would end up uh, serving as restoring the work of one of the most radical artists. No? It speaks very well of the Getty, in the, but it's, it's an interesting idea. So this happened last year in Los Angeles. In Mexico, uh, Siqueiros had this wonderful workshop that he called it La Tallera, like a feminine word, in Cuernavaca. And there's several murals of his there. This has also been restored. It was just reopened and uh, now can be visited. In Argentina, Siqueiros did another very interesting mural called Ejercicio Plástico that has also been restored. So in this presentation on Saturday, I'm going to show all of these murals, and I'm going to talk about one last uncovered mural that is here in Los Angeles, and that it is a very important mural. Uh, it's called Workers' Meeting, and it's a mural that Siqueiros dedicated to African Americans. That's the last mural of Siqueiros, and I would say of any other of the great three, that is still uncovered. And we know where it is, we believe it's in good condition, and we're going to say that on our Saturday lecture. So I would want to invite uh, all of those who are interested in art, and, and those who are interested in politics, who are interested in, in, in life, you know, to come this Saturday, August 10, 8 p.m., to the Museum of Latin American Art. Uh, come early, we have a little little placita with beautiful uh, food shops and art, little, it's like a little, little, little market, no? Come early, bring a jacket and, and some pants and a blanket because it's an outdoor presentation. Uh, but do come and learn more about Siqueiros, uh, who in my view is Mexico's muralist for the future. Fantastic, fantastic. Gregorio. Thank you for all that and uh, looking forward to Saturday. Appreciate it. Thank you for Thank being you. with us.